Welcome inside the W.B. Mason Coach Support right here on GoHosh.com. Ron LeFay, alongside Dennis Papadatos, the head coach of the Hosh Wrestling Team. Coach, how you doing? Doing good. Doing good on this rainy Tuesday morning. <laughs> Let's start with last Saturday as well. Franklin and Marshall College in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. A doubleheader last Saturday as you started there and then moved to Drexel against Franklin and Marshall, a 22-21 victory. How was Hosh able to pull that one out? Uh, lucky, to be honest with you. We didn't compete well at all. Um, really not. I mean, I mean, the two weights they forfeited to us, um, we were slated to win, um, probably by bonus points. But, you know, Nays and Omar haven't been pinners. I think I don't think either of them have been pinned in their career. I should sure, have be honest with you, maybe Nays has won. So getting the forfeits, you know, we obviously forfeited 41, which is um, kind of really grumpy. I wanted to go through the whole season with forfeiting none. But as, as I keep saying, only because I see people posting things not directed towards us on on forfeiting and it's how what it is for the sport. I'm going to say it again. I have a 20-man roster cap, 18 men on the team, and I'm redshirting seven, which means I have 11 guys for 10 weights, and it took me the 14th date, the 13th date, to finally forfeit. I didn't want to do it. He obviously was not cleared uh, medically, or he would have. Uh, he may not be cleared medically this week either, uh, but he'll be back. He should be back by Harvard and Brown and hopefully, you know, EIWA. So, uh, um, so we forfeited 141, but their guy is pretty good at 41 as well. Um, and obviously they forfeited back to us in 97 in heavyweight. Um, we, we didn't compete that well. Uh, you, know, um, you know, there was five weights I was concerned about, and FNM won those five weights. Actually, four of them, because one of them was 41 to begin with, because their guy is pretty good. And, you know, I wasn't too happy. I was way more pleased wow. with our tenacity and effort against Drexel, even though the team score won't represent. I honestly believe if we did our performance level or level of competitiveness against Drexel, against f and it wouldn't have been 22-21. But it was, and hey, for the way things are going sometimes, you know, you know, I'm not going to complain about a win, but I, I can sure not be happy about it. That's, that, that's what I'll tell you. So let's get to the second match of that doubleheader last Saturday against Drexel, like you mentioned, Coach. 36-2 loss to an EIWA opponent in Drexel. What went wrong in that match against the Dragons? Uh, um, as we've kind of always said, um, it was a, a lot more along the lines of the Cornell match, which, uh, if you remember, if you were in the dual meet, you would have never guessed that the score was that. I mean, uh, I would say seven of the matches we could have won. I don't want to say should have won, but we definitely could have won. We were within one scoring opportunity away with 10 seconds left in the match to win. But they won six of those seven, fair and square. Really no bad, eh, heavyweight was kind of, I didn't agree with the stolen call, but at the least we would have went to overtime, so there's no reason to say we would have won. Um, but, you know, if you look at it, 25, you know, their the guy's pretty good, he, he put it on us. But uh, 33, you know, against Devoid, a kid ranked third in the uh, 13th in the country, has been in the, all, been in the quarterfinals, you know, All-American round of the national tournament, uh, EIWA finalist. Um, Vinny Vest, a true freshman, going against a fifth-year senior. He lost 7-1, but it, he was losing 3-1 with five seconds left and just went for a big move to try to win, which I got to give the kid credit. And obviously that big move turned out to be a defensive 2-2 two and, two and gave him four points right at the end. But we were in more scoring opportunities to win. And I would argue to say we, you know, I, we deserved to win that match, but DeVoy did what he had to. He got in one scoring opportunity, finished it. Close the deal, held on, uh, got out from our good position. So uh, you know, you know that that same thing with 49. We were we were um, we were like a foot away from putting that match in overtime. Uh, you know, uh, scoring defensively against another kid that was in the quarterfinals of the national tournament last year uh, could have won that match. So there's there's two already. Uh, we forfeited 41, um, 57. We lose in overtime where all of them. I mean, without that one, we really should have pulled out. We really should have. 74, same thing. Winning big. Come, comes back on us. We try to hold on to a lead. Looked like the Atlanta Falcons. You know what I mean? Like, oh my God, I gotta hold on to this as opposed to keep wrestling. And lost a match he shouldn't have lost to. I mean, he beat the kids that beat that kid. He was beating him six two at the end of the first, and you know, lost seven six. But again, the kid toughened up and got it done. That's why I was more grumpy on our situation that you know we were right there. Um, same thing with 84. 84 was another match. We lost by like nine, but I actually got the first takedown, was in the match, was down by like two, and then ended up giving a six-point move, you know what I mean, to try to tie it. So, and then it just throws it way out of whack to the other guy. Instead of tying it, you know, down by eight, you know, and, and 97 we won in overtime, which was the only match that we won the type, the super tough, tight situations. And then heavyweight, probably should went to overtime. We lost four to one, but we were in on the, the winning takedown 
and instead got taken down at the buzzer, which actually probably was after the buzzer, but it didn't matter. They lose by a point, lose by three points. So they, I mean, if you like, like I said, 33, 49, 57, 74, 84, 97, have all winnable, like winnable within five seconds left in the match. We could have won. Now, we didn't win any of them, and that's why I'm upset, because Drexel found a way and did what they had to do to win every single one of them, and we only won one of those. But at the end of the, kind of, the, end of the day, we're, we're right there against a top 25 team like Drexel is, and if we had that performance, our tenacity and competitiveness that we did against Drexel, um, on other days, we actually, I actually think we win that duel. If we win all those matches, we win that duel. And we probably have three less losses on the year to some teams we shouldn't have, and we just competed the way we did. So uh, that's the bright spot. The negative spot, we lost 33-2. to two. Both, both heavyweights lost a team point for screaming at each other. I, I actually can't believe the ref gave them both. It is what it is. I, I didn't hear what they said to each other. All I know is me and the director coach both grabbed our guy out of there. But uh, at heavyweight, both teams lost a team point for, I'm pretty sure it was just a... Uh, screaming match you know at the end of, end of the match so i like the competitiveness but we got to you know keep it in check and just three matches remaining on the season now coach before tournament season uh hits in march this week just one match on the slate a non-conference opponent in Ryder. how do you pull out a win against Ryder? uh i mean Ryder is arguably the best they've been or at least uh, almost the best they've been they're as good as the armies and the buffaloes and they're very good right now very good right now uh they're not in our conference anymore but for my days yeah, I still look at this Ryder being our biggest rival. Unfortunately, it has been a rivalry lately, and we, we want to make it a rivalry again, and we will this year and hopefully in the very, very near future because, uh, like I said, Ryder's real good right now. But historically, Ryder's a team that, um, you know, we go home back in, uh, home and away matches with each other each year uh, since the beginning of time, I believe. So, you know, from my days here was, uh, you know, all four years I, I wrestled for Hofstra in the conference tournament, we either took first or second in the conference, and Ryder took either first or second in the conference. They were, so as far as I'm concerned, Ryder, as I tell the guys, Ryder's our rival, even though it's kind of toned down a lot since we're in different conferences, and it's kind of less on the line because of it. But we want to keep it fresh, and they're not that far. Um, you know, the, uh, the Ryder coaches view it the same way I do, a, a happy, angry rivalry with each other. You know what I mean? Like, uh, so, but they're good, and because of that rivalry, they're always going to come with their A game to wrestle us, and we got to come with our A game to wrestle, wrestle them. And they're, like I said, really good, a lot of good older veteran leadership, you know, returning all Americans on the team, a bunch of returning national qualifiers, a bunch of ranked guys, a bunch of good transfers. Um, it'll be a tall task this year, but if we compete like we did against Drexel, we'll be in the dual meet like with every, everybody else. So, uh, you know, that's what we're looking to do. But they're going to come to scrap. I can guarantee they will come to scrap. Dennis Papadados, the head coach of the Hops Wrestling Team. Coach, thanks for, for the time. Thanks for having us. Uh, thanks for being here. And see you guys Thursday at Ryder. Thank you for watching the WB Well, Mason. it's here. Sorry. It's our home match, but I meant like to see you Thursday when we wrestle Ryder in our home gym. And thank you for watching the WB Mason Coach Support right here on GoHops.com.